In the last video, we learned how to make epoxides by the reaction of alkenes with MCPBA. Epoxides are a versatile and useful functional group. While technically they are ethers, they are much more reactive than most ethers due to the ring strain of the three-membered ring. Epoxides are the basis of many superglues, hence the term epoxy, and are used as sterilizing, sterilizing agents and as precursors to polymers such as polyethylene glycol, or PEG. Epoxides are electrophiles. Their LUMOs are sigma star CO. These orbitals are especially good acceptor orbitals because of the ring strain inherent in the CO bonds of epoxides. They can, in principle, be opened by nucleophilic attack at either carbon. Luckily for chemists, the site of, nucle the site of nucleophilic attack is predictable and controllable based on the conditions of the reaction. Strong nucleophiles op open epoxides at the less substituted carbon. This is essentially an SN2 reaction with a special sort of leaving group, an alkoxide, which is only a good leaving group because when it leaves, the ring strain of the epoxide is alleviated. We know that the SN2 reaction is controlled by sterics, so the less sterically encumbered electrophilic site is where the nucleophile will attack. This reaction is actually quite dangerous Opening epoxides with hydroxide, for instance, is so exothermic that it, it can initiate chain reactions that lead to massive explosions. This used to be a train car filled with an epoxide, but someone had not removed all of the traces of cleaner used to sterilize the interior of the train car. The cleaner had contained lye or sodium hydroxide, the residual hydroxide initiated a chain reaction, and the train car was obliterated. Nevertheless, under controlled, safe laboratory conditions, most strong nucleophiles will open epoxides at the less substituted site. The conditions of these reactions are basic, so an H plus workup is required to provide neutral products. Some examples of nucleophiles that perform this reaction are hydroxide, alkoxides, cyanide, azide, and others. Even our old friend lithium aluminum hydride can do this. Under acidic conditions, we get an interesting change in how this reaction proceeds. Under these conditions, the oxygen of the epoxide can be protonated making a positively charged ring and turning that O into a quite good leaving group. It's such a good leaving group that it can start to leave on its way to generating a carbocation. But since it's stuck to the molecule by this other bond, it can never quite break entirely free. The OH plus struggles and writhes, trying to break away from its carbon captors, tugging electrons away from the carbons it's bound to. Through this struggle, the more substituted carbon hangs on a little more loosely because it can handle a positive charge better. Recall hyperconjugation. This means that the more substituted side of the epoxide has a larger partial positive charge, and a nucleophile is more attracted to that site. Under acidic conditions, weak nucleophiles open epoxides at the more substituted carbon. So, for instance, if you treat isobutylene with MCPBA to generate isobutylene oxide, and then dissolve it in methanol with a trace of acid catalyst, this reaction occurs. giving the alcohol out here and the methoxy group at the more substituted site. In general, epoxides can be opened by various nucleophiles to give alcohols with new functional groups on the adjacent carbon. 
Under basic conditions, the epoxy site is opened at the less substituted site, while under acidic conditions, it's opened at the more substituted site.